Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is the business section of the news brought to us by A2 Hosting. This is the hosting company that I'm using for myself, for my clients. Um, I'm using everything on a VPS. I'm hosting about 30 or 40 or so websites on that. I also host my Nextcloud server, my email servers, just a whole lot of different cool things. I'm even testing an interesting online book server, all done on an A2, uh, A2 hosting server. So you can get uh, shared services as low as $4 a month, and uh, you can get VPS as low as $5 a month, although if you do want cPanel, you're gonna be paying quite a bit more. But anyway, you can use the affiliate link that is on the screen or in the description down below if you are in need of a website for your business. And with that, let's jump on into the news. And first, sign up for the newsletter. No, thank you. No. See, this is why people run ad blockers. Can I please collapse? No, I don't want to load your crap. All right. So first on the list is uh, Nero. This is the same company that is bringing us, um, uh, same company that is helping Kroger with deliveries, grocery deliveries. Now they're going to be doing pizza deliveries through Domino's. So if you uh, are a pizza lover, like pizza loving nerd there, um, would you order a pizza if it was coming from an autonomous robot? Is this good? Is this bad? So my guess is, since it's the same car they're using for the grocery delivery, is you... Um, you would order the pizza and this thing comes in and then basically alerts you via an app that your pizza's ready. Now, I have a lot of issues with this personally in this implementation. Now, there's some models that some, some of the companies are experimenting with like a mobile pizza bakery. You know, you're going around, it has all the stuff to make, I don't know, 100 pizzas driving around kind of like an Uber or whatever, waiting for the pizza call, and then it goes en route, they throw the pizza stuff in, and by the time it hits your door, the pizza, ding, comes right out of the oven, so it comes right out of the oven directly to you. Um, the concern I have with this is it looks from this like, unless there's one pizza delivery per car, they're stacking more people, and this means random strangers could potentially be coming in here and looking through all the pies, see which one's theirs. Oh boy, can you imagine this? Oh, this one's not mine. Boom. 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 Oh, this one's mine. All right, you know. Eh. Kind of like that old, uh, there's an old uh, Dennis Waitley talk. You know, he's talking about, you know, we talk about the good old days. The good old days when we all used to share a single bathtub with a single pool of water. We were last in line and our uncle was a pig farmer, you know. <laughs> So uh, anyway, um, would you guys want this? Now, of course, if it's just I order my pizza and then this one single robot comes exclusive to me, I don't know, I might think about that. So it got me thinking this week. Would you rather have an autonomous robot or an employee of the pizza shop in the pizza deliver guy or a random guy through an Uber Eats app? Which one would be your preference if you were to phone in for a pie? Let me know in the comments or uh, in the live chat, whatever it happens to be. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, this company, uh, so if you are down in Houston, Texas, you can uh, test this out, I believe. All right, next in business news. Apparently there's been a lot of these. Oh, I must enable DRM to play videos. Well, I don't want to enable DRM, sorry. Um, all right, so uh, apparently there's been a wave of people taking videos and photos of people in Teslas sleeping on the road. So here's this brief video here. You can kind of see this guy over here. He is just asleep at the wheel. You can kind of see him go, get closer, get closer, get closer, get closer. Oh, come on. I think they're gonna zoom back into him again. Let's see. Oh yeah, guy's asleep at the wheel. All right, so uh, this is of course from uh, from ABC7 um, and they're kind of reporting. So there's they've actually had a number, a number of these. Um, so the person that caught the video called 911 when they uh, saw the sleepy driver. He said the driver was still passed out when he took the 110 exit, the 110 freeway exit. People are questioning, as more people are, are, uh, drive using autopilot, how do you keep them from dozing and driving? And this raises an interesting issue that it, it, 
the problem here is that Tesla is calling this autopilot. The same thing that in a plane will actually fly a plane, but it will not drive a car. And so many people think about this. At what point in time do we have to hold Tesla accountable if one of these guys were to have a car crash? And it's going to happen. Of course, there were already documented cases of autopilot being on during fatal car accidents. Uh, in those instances that I know of, they've all been uh, Tesla only, usually like a Tesla ramming into the back of their fire engine or uh, median divider, their favorite two things to run full force into. Um, but at what point in time do we need to hold Tesla liable for the fact that a whole lot of their customers are apparently sleeping at the wheel, driving down the road on the interstate? This is not okay. And this is something that I don't like government regulation, but someone needs to look into this crap because holy moly, the last thing I want. In fact, it was a funny story today. I was pulling out of a out of a, a store downtown today, and, and a fire truck comes by. And the first thought that came to my mind: I hope there's not a Tesla behind that thing. <laughs> I mean, literally, true story. Um, but anyway, um, oh, this is neat. This is neat. Google Google has th their heart began to bleed. Google has a bleeding heart. They're going to pledge one billion dollars to ease the Silicon Valley housing crisis it helped to create. Yeah, they want to be a better neighbor. Why don't we start by sending some street cleaners out to clean up the pooies? Um, so they're basically trying to, uh, they're sending out a lot of money. $750 million um, is going, uh, let's see, $750 million of their existing office space will be converted into about 15,000 units. Uh, $250 million. So it makes me wonder, are they just going to, is, is, a place to live going to be a perk of working for Google. Can you imagine living in a Google house? <laughs> wow. $250 million toward incentives for other developers to build 5,000 units of affordable housing. Good luck with that. Uh, $50 million to nonprofits that will help the homeless find shelters. Nothing to help clean the pooey off the streets? Oh, man. There's no dedicated funds to clean the pooey off the streets. So this is good in that they're trying to help, but this is one of these issues. I, I was listening to this discussion the other day. I forget where I, I heard it from, but, you know, as I say on this channel a lot, we're not in a capitalist society. We are in a corporatocracy or an oligarchy, if you want. In a real capitalist society... The emphasis is that the people will have enough money to survive. The businesses have the free reign to make the products. The people are making enough money in, the, in their wages to be able to buy and sell. We are to this point in our world right now where we can no longer buy and sell, at least not without getting credit. We have to put everything on credit now. And it's just getting to the point where the only people that can afford to live in these areas are actually the Google employees. They have to bust people in from out of town to work at the fast food places because the fast food places couldn't possibly pay them enough money to actually have a house near their restaurant. I don't have a good answer for this. I don't have a good solution for this, but this is something we need to think about. This company is getting so big that they want to, they want to help and donate a billion of their dollar, a billion of their dollars to help make affordable housing. Maybe we do have an income crisis in this country, but I'm definitely not for, you know, raising the minimum wage up or things like that. A lot of your um, democratic socialism type stuff, nah, I'm not leaning in that direction. Mm. I still would like to see, uh, I'd like to see the free market make it. Uh, we just got to break up the corporatocracies, the oligarchies and uh, things like that. Well, in a uh, unlikely, uh, Unlikely group of uh, group of uh, friends, farmers, hackers, and doctors unite. Man, we should make a game show out of this. Um, they all unite to support right to repair laws, and so of course, uh, of course, if you if you're in in this world, you mostly know this from you know I fix it, Lewis Rossman. You know the the iPhone tech, the phone tech, the ability to fix our phones. Lewis Rossman uh, lobbies for this stuff a lot. Um, which is good. 
But you, what you may not be aware of if you don't follow, if you're not, uh, if you're like in the tech world and that's kind of where you want to stay is in the tech world. One of the challenges we have here is that the farmers, right? Farmers are being locked down by DRM. So you buy for like $500,000. In fact, I love the way they worded it. I think it's on page two. I love the way they worded it. For about $500,000, you can buy a brand new Rolls Royce Phantom with all the bells and whistles or the base model John Deere Combine. So for $500,000, you can buy your baseline model for your farm. The problem is by buying that, you are agreeing to these giant binding arbitration and terms of service that will prevent you from fixing your own tractor. Now, there is, it is now legal for a farmer to actually hire a hacker to come and bypass the software of their own device. That is actually now legal, um, which is good, all right? Um, but the problem is, is that they're still not releasing the manuals, they're still not releasing the parts, and that's what the right to repair is all about, is releasing the manuals and releasing the parts. So when a farmer drops $500,000 on a tractor and he needs to get it fixed, he has options other than going back to you. And that is really what's at the, at the heart of this. And of course, doctors and hospitals are now starting to get in on this because of uh, some of the, the medical devices and things like that. And the reality is the right to repair um, guys come back and keep on saying, or not, um, the, the companies that are against the right to repair lobby, I should say, they're coming back and saying, well, this will make things more dangerous. This will potentially breach security. This will be a problem. The fact of the matter is though, is that a car has all of the same danger implications, but we have solid laws on the books that make diagnostics manuals available. It makes parts available in any auto parts store. We have the ability to go out and fix our car or hire the mechanic that we want to fix our car. All the right to repair people are saying is we need to have that on everything. And I agree because if I paid money for a computer or a phone or a tractor or a defibrillator, I need to be able to fix that. That thing needs to be mine. I need to own that. And I need to be able to fix that if I want to. I need to be able to modify that if I want to. That is, um, that's what I think we should do. And on to our feature story for today. Facebook moderators are going crazy. Um, so bodies and seats. I love the drama here. Um, so basically what goes on here is several contractors uh, are breaking their NDAs, basically opening themselves up to lawsuits to show the world how bad it is to work as a Facebook content moderator. All right, so uh, store contains descriptions of violent acts against people and animals. Uh, yeah, be warned. Uh, I'm going to try not to read many of those. The link is in the description. Um, you can grab this if you would like to read all those fine details yourself. But the basic bottom line is these content uh, moderators, first of all, they have to meet a 98% accuracy quota. That's insane. All right. And in many cases, there were situations where um, something was should have come down, but their bosses said, oh no, you need to leave that up so that the police can find it and track it down. And then he said that this graphic video, which unfortunately I read about, kept on showing up in his feed over and over and over. And ultimately, I think they were only paying these people like $28,000 a year, $24,000 a year is minimum wage. Um, so slightly above minimum wage to sit here and look at the most obscene, grotesque, violent, disturbing, and destructive behaviors that this cesspool of the world posts on the bathroom wall called Facebook. All right. And so they have to sit here and watch all of this kind of stuff. And uh, what ended up happening here is back in March, one of these employees simply couldn't take it anymore, just had a heart attack at his desk and rolls over and dies, basically. the um, It took the ambulance a lot of extra time because their building wasn't particularly marked. And while this is going on, the manager's just telling him, oh no, you guys need to go back and get your quotas. One woman 
got sick because the working conditions are so bad. It was a very unsanitary place. She got sick. She comes into work because she can't miss any more work or they'll fire her. So she keeps on going up to the bathroom to keep vomiting at work. They finally tell her you can't get up out of your seat anymore. So they bring her a trash can to vomit into. I mean, imagine that's your job day in, day out. Oh, look at that stuff. I don't know if I'm vomiting because I'm sick or what came across my screen is horrid. But this is what the Facebook content moderators are going through. Um, do we have interesting solutions in this? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, so basically people are falling over and dying. The conditions are very unsanitary. Stuff that probably should come down is being told to be left up there so police can investigate. Um, crazy, crazy. Crazy, crazy. Um, so this poor worker who died on the job was 42 years old. Uh, very sad, very sad. But that is the life of the content moderators. Um, what's the solution? I don't know. Maybe everyone stop using Facebook. There you go. There's a solution for you. I don't know. Um, I don't have any real solutions to this one either. A solutionless day in the news. It's just becoming a grim world. Hmm. Let me know what you guys think about all these things in the comments down below.